Hi and welcome to Deployment Research. My name is Johan and in this video you will learn how to speed up your deployments by adding in a bit of peer-to-peer -to, -peer to the mix, branch cast specifically. Now, in a previous video I showed you how to set up the PSD platform, which again is an extension to Microsoft Deployment Toolkit that enables cloud imaging, deployment over HTTPS, as well as support for peer-to-peer. The peer-to-peer -peer support come from Branch Cache, a native Windows function. I will give you a quick crash course in this in, in just a second. The reason we do this is obviously to increase or improve the deployment speed, making things go faster, especially when you're downloading over internet or if you have our server remote and we have a weak WAN link where you want to deploy a bunch of machines over, because it is quite the difference to download 50 images over a link from a remote server versus having just one client download and stuff and then share that content locally on the network. This also removes the need or reduces the need for having multiple deployment servers. Even a single server in Azure can handle hundreds if not thousands deployments every single day just because of the peer-to-peer -peer functionality because it's not really that many clients that talks to it. The load happens locally on the network. This also reduces the cost if you're hosting your VM in Azure or Amazon, because every gig that you download, you would have to pay for it. And by enabling peer-to-peer, -peer, you can cut that cost down to a bare minimum. So, what is Branch Cache? Well, as I mentioned, it's a component in Windows. It's been around for a good decade now. It came with Windows 7. It's been available in every Windows release since, uh, a good change in the later version since Windows 10 and in now Windows 11, the content in the cache is actually encrypted as well as encrypted when it's downloaded over the network. Every single request a file or a client does to get a file, it always authenticated on the server first and only if the client gets the correct key, it can decrypt the content. Another very cool feature about uh, Branch Cache is that it's using data deduplication. So say that you have 20 driver packages from a vendor. They may be 25, 30, 40 gigs in size when they're up on the server. But if I would download all those 20 driver packages down to a client, you will find that it will download maybe 8, 9, 10 gigs out of 30. Because on a block level, which Branch Cache operates, it only downloads the delta. And that's even more cool when we're talking about operating system images. Say that you have an image, a Windows 10 image from September, so last month, and you download that to advice, and then it becomes October, you get the new image, and you download that one. Branch Cache is only going to download the delta in between September and October, which is typically just a few hundred megs. Now, the challenge with OSD or imaging and branch cache is that the WinPE or Windows PE doesn't have branch cache by default in it, or bits and branch cache doesn't exist. So we need to add that to the boot image. And that's not one of the ready-made optional components that you simply can find on your deployment chair, but you have to use a free OSD toolkit from our friends at Two Point Software. That toolkit comes in two flavors. There is a free community version, and there is also a commercial version that includes support and is also faster compared to the community edition. How much faster, you ask? Between two and three times faster, at least. But for now, for this demo, I'm going to work with the free community version. Now, the scenario again, we have a bunch of machines to deploy. It could be an office, a lab, classroom, something. But the, the uh, characteristics here is that the server is remote. It's either in one of your data centers, it's up in Azure, it's up in Amazon, somewhere, but not on your network. In fact, you have nothing on your network other than like network equipment. So there are no local servers. That's the scenario. So let's um, get to it. What I have here is a quite similar deployment server as I showed you in the previous demo. In this one, I have added in a few Windows 10 images. So I have a base image with just the OS. It's about four gigs in size. And I have this one here with some applications that is about 8.5 gigs in size. 
this. In the back end, I have also added in a few driver packages and I showed you how to create those in a previous demo, but they are here. So each and every model, there is a WIM file for that model or for that driver package. To get um, OSD to work with branch cache, you need to do a few things on your deployment server. So first of all, you need to open up Server Manager and you need to make sure that you add in the branch cache feature. This one here. You can do this for PowerShell if you don't like Server Manager, but this is the feature that you need to add. If you expect to have lots and lots of images and applications and drivers on the server, you may have to increase the publication cache. Uh, it's quite rare that I hit the default limit, but it is a good practice to actually move that cache over to a data disk. So on my blog here, if you search for publication cache or branch cache publication cache, you will find a little PowerShell snippet that will allow you to configure the size of it. You rarely would need to go over a few gigabytes in size because it's just a checksum of all the files that are stored in this one, not the actual data. Now, a few other things you need to do is that, depending on your ADK version, you need to add in a matching OS. So if you have, like I have here on this server, you have ADK 2004, this one here, you have to import a Windows 10 OS. If you have, like I have on this server, where I have ADK for Windows 11 21 H2, you will have to add in Windows 11 binaries because we want to match the WinP version binaries that we are injected with the corresponding Windows version. So that's something you need to add here. And then in your custom settings in a file, you will simply have to tell it that, hey, you know what? I would like to have branch cache. And by the way, you're supposed to inject binaries from this particular image. And this is just the name that you have here in your deployment share. Other things you need to do is that you need to download the toolkit. So go to the two-point website and download the toolkit. Again, in this demo, I'm using the free version. And when you have downloaded it, you need to copy it to the ready-made plugins folder that we created in here. So simply paste the download after extraction in here. And if you do that, the next time you update your deployment share, you will find that will be a log file created that will show you how it's injecting those files into the boot image using the tool from Tupunt. So shorthand version is you update your deployment share, and now you have a boot image that speaks branch cache. You also need to do some smaller changes to your sequence. So here is a normal sequence without the changes. Here is a sequence with the changes. So let me open that again. Sometimes the workbench doesn't refresh the screen correctly. But here I've added in a two-point group. I'm adding in yet another step to have it branch cache enabled. This is just to override any setting that might be uh, coming from other rules in my deployment share. I'm telling it to use bits for download and I'm telling it to enable branch cache. All these commands we have documented up on the official Friends of MDT uh, GitHub repository. So if you go to that one there, Go to documentation, go to branch cache installation guide. This is where you will see those commands that you need to add into the sequence. And the final one I've added in is a step down here that will move the downloaded cache into the full OS just before it reboots into Windows for the first time. So shorthand version, make sure that you download a matching OS image. Make sure to specify it in your inner file. Obviously add the branch cache features on the server, download the toolkit, and update the boot image, and update your sequences.
That's it. And that means the next time you deploy a machine, go to this machine here, go to clean snapshot, power it on, connect into my web server, start the wizard, I'm going to pick my toolkit. Toolkit enable sequence. Good name is any. And I start my deployment. Now with this change, every time the sequence needs to download something, since it's enabled with branch cache, it's actually going to look around on the local network, trying to find peers that already have downloaded that content. Now, obviously, if this machine is the first machine on the network, it will download everything from the deployment server. But as soon as one client is deployed, all other deployments will be able to pull from the first one. And a cool thing about branch cache is that it can actually pull from multiple peers at the same time and allow you to get some pretty good speeds on your deployments. So here you can see the sequence enabling branch cache, meaning starting up the bits and branch cache services. Configuring it to use bits for downloads. Enable the feature. This is a virtual machine, so there are no drivers to inject, but I will show you a recording I did from a physical device in just a little bit. But here you can see that the virtual machine is now about to download the operating system image from the deployment server. And here you start to see some interesting data. Due to the toolkit, we also get some additional info on the progress bar. So you can see here that we have content coming from peers, and we can see the speed it is coming from those peers. When you use virtual machine for testing, you rarely get above 100 megabit per second. That is simply how branch cache is designed when you use it on virtual machines. Branch cache always try to be the good citizen and not try to overload the system. And this particular VM only has two CPUs on it. But if I stop this one and instead show an exact same deployment of a physical device that I recorded using a capture card, you will see it a little bit different. So this is an Optiplex that I started up on, um, on a USB stick. Going to jump forward in time a little bit. Start the deployment. Selecting the same sequence. When it comes to uh, downloading the driver package, you can see we're getting almost 200 meg per second. And this is what you can expect with the free edition of the toolkit. But still, it's way better than having to download this driver package over the WAN link. When it comes to the OS image, we will get about the same speed here, coming up to somewhere around 200 meg per second, give or take. But once again, this is locally. This is in between peers. There is nothing being downloaded from the server at this point. And all in all, when this one is done, we are back. We have a version of Windows deployed fairly quickly. Now, to show you some test results, so pause this video. And when deploying machines over a 100 megabit link, so your deployment server is in Azure, Amazon, whatever, the link is 100 megabit per second. When I deploy 10 machines at the same time without peer to peer, so no peer-to-peer -peer whatsoever. It took about an hour 40 minutes for the clean image and about two and a half hours whoops, for the bigger image. When I enabled peer-to-peer -peer, but there was nothing locally already and I simply deployed 10 new machines, we can see where we cut down the deployment time already uh, almost in half and for the larger image e even more. The reason this was a little bit slower than I expected was that I actually had four or five different models 
different driver packages and they were not able to peer to each other very much. But as soon as I had a few machines deployed already, meaning there were pre-cached content on the location, then I was down to about 25 minutes to deploy these 10 machines and about 40 minutes to deploy the larger image. And this is pretty good. This is totally acceptable. And um, it won't take you that much to enable branch cache. Download the toolkit, extend your deployment share, and you will find that deployment is going to be much, much quicker. Thanks for joining. Have a great rest of your day.